Hey there. Today I'm celebrating Stop Time Live in the Moment is ranked in the top 5% of podcasts globally and continuing to grow. I recently won the prestigious Communicator Award of Excellence in Podcasting, and I am thrilled. But I have to say that that didn't happen without you, my listeners. I am so truly, truly grateful to you. I'm curating an amazing lineup for the fall season, so stay tuned and please take a moment to write a review wherever you listen. But for today, I wanted to take a moment to reflect on how grateful I am for this opportunity. I'd like to thank my extraordinary guests for taking the time to be in the moment with me. I'm so honored that they have trusted me to hold space for them, to be introspective, thoughtful, and even vulnerable, so that we might have a rare glimpse of the person inside the artist, the human being, rather than the human doing. So many lessons learned. Thank you. Stop Time grew out of the intersection of my lifelong career as an artist, performing arts educator, and my practice as a life coach. In March 2020, when Broadway shut down and the world as we know it changed forever, I felt inspired, even called, to connect with and hold space for the Broadway community and check in on how they were managing to stay energetically engaged during these challenging times. I had no idea how to do a podcast. All I knew was that I needed to serve my community. The first three guests were my students, Annalise Scarpacci, who at just 20 years old already had Broadway credits on her resume, but was just about to open a Mrs. Doubtfire in her first adult role. Nathan Levy was cast as the understudy for Evan, Jared, and Connor in Dear Evan Hansen, but had yet to go on yet. He did eventually make his Broadway debut as Evan in January 2022. Congrats, Nathan. And Maya Blaney had just been cast in her first Broadway show, Jagged Little Pill. Since those first three episodes, I've had the incredible pleasure of speaking with creatives from on Broadway, Hollywood, New York, screenwriters, shoe designers, you name it. It's been extraordinary. In today's episode, you'll hear just a few excerpts and highlights from these conversations. You know, people often ask me what my favorite conversation has been so far, and I can honestly say that each and every one of them has moved me in a different way. If you've been cherry-picking episodes, I urge you to listen to them all. The compilation of wisdom, life lessons, and humanity is truly extraordinary. Speaking with Patricia Ward Kelly was really special. She's the biographer and wife of the late, great Jean Kelly. I feel like in the aftermath of Jean's death, I was very vulnerable because I just I just had this gaping hole in me. And I think everybody could see that. But I don't think they see that anymore. And so every time I go out the door, I, I know that something can happen, but also something magical can happen. And mm. inevitably something magical happens when you go out and you open yourself up enough to receive that. I spoke with shoe designer for the stars, Phil LaDuca, about fame, success, regret, and shoes. But I never took the time to relish it. I never acknowledged the beauty and the amazing talent around me. I was so consumed with needing the attention to be focused on me. I spoke with actress Anna Tierney about embracing her rougher edges. Again, it's this thing of presenting your best self, which it just doesn't exist, does it? You know, that's that's some kind of sleek version of yourself that's really put together, but actually the the interesting part is is the sort of unpolished. I spoke with award-winning costume designer Paul Tazewell on the eve of his Academy Award nomination for Spielberg's West Side Story. There are these explosive, very amazing things happening in my life. There's also a great tragedy happening in me. And as, uh, you know, for myself, uh, I've been 
uh, challenged with figuring out how to, how to be present in both. Broadway choreographer Lauren Lotaro and I spoke about ambition and the importance of work-life balance. Too much grit and not enough consciousness. Just, you know, boy, that carrot is always inches away from your fingertips. So if you chase the carrot your whole life, whew, what kind of life is that? I walked into this business wanting it badly and at the same time wanting a full life. What I learned is that I bring my artistry to my daily life. Emmy Award-winning feature drama and documentary editor Stephen Sander and I spoke about the importance of truly listening. Is we're so used to in today's world of, of expecting things now and instantly and, and you know, wanting instant responses and not having the patience anymore for things. Every, you know, your life's going along at 100 miles an hour. Um, and we're so used to completing other people's sentences. If people stutter, we think that they need help or that they're nervous um, and we don't give them time. And if you don't give someone time, you're not going to hear what they have to say and you're going to miss out on something quite profound probably mm-hmm. and you're not going to learn something. And just to kind of take a step back, you know, breathe, listen, kind of opens your mind to you know more possibilities. I spoke with Hollywood screenwriters Meg Lafave and Lorian McKenna about making it in Hollywood, making a difference and trying to accept a compliment. Right. So somehow our rejection of our own needs, of our own inner grumbly, gritty stuff, because it's not appropriate, it's not wanted, it's whatever voice in your head is telling you, but your your impact in the world is sitting inside that need. Like, it's interesting that that need you feel is also your superpower. I also have this profound and scary lack of ability to take a compliment. Um, It's like I desperately want compliments and attention and acknowledgement. And then the second I get it, if I feel like it's out of proportion of what I've earned, I freak out. Mm. Right? My brain splits in half. I don't know how to process it. Is this okay? Am I allowed to accept this? This seems weird. Like what I've done seems out of proportion with the the acknowledgement that I'm getting. Singer-songwriter A.J. Smith got deep about gatekeepers, what it means to make it in the music business and limiting beliefs. Because you want to believe so badly that the only thing standing between you and whatever your benchmark of success is, is this magic elixir solution that somebody else has brought to the table. Um, And it can be really damaging to self-confidence and faith in oneself when you listen to that. Um, Yeah. But it's hard not to listen to that because it's such a complex multifaceted industry. Best-selling author Jody Picot stopped by to chat. I I never expected to live through something that would, that I really had so little control over. So little, you know, that, that really still shakes me now. Back in season one, actor Fra Fee was generous enough to join me while filming Cinderella in England during the height of the pandemic. There's room for us all, and I'm just going to be happy, thankful for what I've got, and work hard to hopefully realize my ambitions and dreams. And if they sort of meander and change, that's great. But, um, you know, live in the now and just work hard. Um, that's 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 what we, what, we, what we have to do. Yeah. Playwright Douglas Lyons talked about how important it is to make a difference and an impact with writing. It's an exercise of trying to figure out how do I grip, grab, move and heal this audience and Mm. question them and stir them. And that is that's something I'm very in tune with. So if I need to keep rewriting, I will do that until it lands the way I want. Our world and our country needed a moment to stop, think and reevaluate ourselves. And if anyone has left this pandemic the same that they were before, I don't think they got the lesson. My conversation with the legendary Brenda Buffalino was a masterclass in creativity. 
the practice is not only with your feet or with your hands. The practice is with yourself. I've lived a magical, magical life. And the strength that I've had, that was given to me. I've still got legs that can dance. Yeah. I can't believe it. Rodney Hicks and I really got into gratitude. When I get up, before I leave the bed, I take a moment and I say thank you. Because you don't know what that is guiding you towards for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. For me, it has to be about the work and about how can my work and my life living help someone else Mm. today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and some of these highlights and that you will continue on the stop time journey with me. Please, please take a moment to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. And let's get more listeners on this show and get it up to the top 1%. A big shout out to all of you, all of my guests, looking forward to bringing you more great shows. I'm Lisa Hopkins. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. And remember to live in the moment. And let's give a big shout out to Philip David Stern, who wrote the fabulous theme music for Stop Time. In music, stop time is that beautiful moment where the band is suspended in rhythmic unison, supporting the soloist to express their individuality. In the moment, I encourage you to take that time and create your own rhythm. Until next time, I'm Lisa Hopkins. Thanks for listening.